Hi, this is Ken McCarthy, and we're celebrating the 20th anniversary of the System Seminar. That's right, the first System Seminar was 2002. It's where people learned about things like squeeze pages and sequential autoresponders and A-B split testing and long ad copy and pay-per-click advertising. And that was just the first seminar. <laughs> and then we went on to innovate in the area of audio advertising and video advertising and even mobile marketing 2008 yep we were one of the first there too the last live system seminar for the general public was in 2011 and after that I closed the doors because I was tired of having people attend my seminar and repackage my material and go out and pretend it was theirs so all all that I do is now done behind closed doors of the system club uh, I wrote a book for my System Club members called The System Club Letters, and I'm going to read uh, a chapter from it uh, every day. And here's the latest chapter. It's called Direct Mail is Cool Part 2. And obviously there was a Part 1. You might have missed it. Um, I recommend you find it. <laughs> or get the book. I mean, my God, I can't believe anybody's listening to these and not buying the book. There's 57 chapters like this. And each one of them is worth a hundred dollars. So you know, the book's twenty-nine bucks. If you can't afford twenty-nine bucks to get fifty-seven hundred dollars worth of material, I don't know. Anyways, direct mail is cool. Part two. Direct mail can mean anything from a dentist sending a courtesy postcard. Did I re read this one? Oh, it's kind of I'm kind of repeating myself a little bit, but that's wait a minute, what am I doing here? So you're going to get see it's free, so you're not going to get uh, you're not going to get the most perfect execution. Okay, I should be going to direct mail is cool part three, which I'm going to do right now. This is the last in a three-part series on direct mail. Part one was about the power of direct mail and why you should consider it. By the way, I have a, a couple of little businesses that don't make a lot of money, but I could live off any one of them independently. Um, and I doubled the revenue of each one of those businesses. They were purely online. And I doubled the revenue by doing one email, I mean, excuse me, one direct mail per year. That's all it took to double the revenue. One mail sent around Christmas and uh, two businesses uh, doubled in revenue anyway so don't just consider it take it seriously part two was about two simple practically risk-free ways to use the mail to make money part three is about how to create a winning direct mail package and boy this one's worth a hundred bucks because you, you you could read a lot of books before you get this um, um, boil down the way I'm going to boil it down right now. The first principle to remember when creating, when it comes to creating a direct mail package, is that ink is cheap. What do I mean by that? Postage is expensive, paper is expensive. You can do a lot of common sense things to keep these costs down. The most important being to keep your list clean and updated so you're not mailing to bad addresses. If you're doing any mailing at all and you didn't know that, I just saved you thousands of dollars. But once you're committed to a mailing, pack the envelope. Now, I wrote this a while ago, so the postage is off, but get your full 42 cents worth of postage and make sure every single piece of paper you put in that letter works hard for you. Sidebar, I am always amazed at people who direct, do direct mail and keep it um, sparse and spare. Why would you do that? The paper is the most expensive thing, the printing, the postage. The ink costs nothing. So put a lot of words, put a lot of messages, put a lot of enticements, put a lot of data, put a lot of whatever you can pack into the envelope. Don't be stingy. The more you tell, the more you sell. You might notice that there isn't a lot of arty white space in direct mail ads, direct response kind of ads. The reason is simple. 
every square inch of paper costs money to print and mail. But ink is cheap. For all practical purposes, it costs nothing to add more words. Along the same lines, if you weigh your package before you mail it, and you should, nothing worse than bringing a couple of thousand letters to the mail house, which I have done in, in ancient times, and finding out you're one, you know, gram over the threshold and you're paying, you know, another 50% for your postage. So anyway, also, simple thing, if it's really damp out, be careful. Wet paper absorbs moisture and it can make your mailer heavy and it could cost you money. So be careful about that. Anyway, um, if there's room to put more stuff in, put it in, like go right up to the limit. If there's room for an extra sheet of paper, use it. If there's room for just a third of a piece of paper, sometimes called a buck slip, use it. Pack that envelope. Don't be a dope. The package. Here are the basic elements that belong in every direct mail package. A sales letter, a standalone order form. A lot of people invest a lot of money and effort into brochures and there may be cases where a brochure comes in handy um, but it is not essential. The letter is what's essential. The order form is what is essential. The order form comes first, literally. In the old days, some direct mail people used to write the order form first. It's that important because it's the last thing your reader sees as he or she is about to make the purchase. Put your order form on a full-sized piece of paper. Print only on one side of the paper. Recap the entire letter, the, the key sales points, the guarantees, the description of bonuses, everything that's essential to the offer on the order form. The order form, should, this is sidebar, should not be an afterthought. It should be the main event. I mean, you're literally on the one yard line and it's, you know, third down or whatever. And um, you want to give it all you've got. Don't be lazy when it comes to making your order form. Don't be lazy with direct mail in general. Don't be lazy with direct response in general. And that's the one challenge with the internet getting to be less so now as the internet gets super crowded but the, the one challenge is it was so forgiving especially in the early days you could almost throw anything up there and it would work and a lot of people got mentally lazy and a lot of people never learned the discipline that you get from direct mail direct mail will sharpen you up and you can take that sharpness to the internet and kick serious ass so do it Anyway, back to the back to the letter. The sales letter. Again, use a regular eight and a, eight and a half by eleven paper. White paper is fine. The, your letter should look and read like a letter, with one important exception. It must have a headline. Forget a, using a letterhead. It's generally a, a waste of precious selling space unless you're part of a famous organization like Harvard University. Sounds simple. It is. There are, of course, fine points you can learn from books and studying great mailers like Rodale, unfortunately no longer a great mailer, and bottom line, no longer a great mailer now that, uh, that Marty's gone and Brian Kurtz is gone. So you kind of have to do some archaeology to find some of the great printed direct response stuff because they're just not making it anymore. It still works, but unfortunately uh, the the... The um, arc of history seems to be that idiots uh, inherit direct response businesses and then run them into the ground. Um, but anyway, yeah, there's a lot more to learn than what I just shared with you. Uh, but as I say in the book, this single page, short as it is, covered all the essentials. So that has been um, part three. Direct mail is cool, part three. And these are chapters from the book the system club letters 
system club is made up of people who either graduated from the system seminar or who were allowed admission after 2011 when I was no longer giving the live events. If you're wondering where innovation and common sense has gone in internet marketing, uh, it's behind the closed doors of the system club. I'm not doing pro public events anymore. Um, anyway, that's it. I'll see you next time. And, uh, you know, get the book. <laughs>